Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn at Work session. Today we're going to talk about it's a family affair. How we can help our families eat a healthier diet and increase their level of physical activity. This program is brought to you by Get Moving Get Healthy New Jersey Workforce and funded by the New Jersey Prevention Network. About some quick statistics on weight. Did you know that two in three adults in our country are overweight or obese? And that one in three children ages 2 to 19 years old are overweight or at risk for being overweight? These numbers are alarming. There are health effects of childhood obesity. What about type 2 diabetes? Certainly you hear more and more about this. And high blood pressure, you hear about this in the news all the time. 60% of obese children ages 5 to 10 have at least one cardiac risk factor. They also are at risk for high blood pressure, asthma, asthma, sleep apnea, and very often suffer from low self-esteem, which can lead to consumption of alcohol and drugs. 50% of obese kids and teens will become obese adults. There are some weight-related health conditions as well that carry on into adulthood, like arthritis, varicose veins, foot problems like fallen arches, abdominal hernia, breathing or respiratory problems, and also low self-esteem, which affects adults as well. What's happening in your body that creates these changes? Very often, heart disease and that could be a result of high blood pressure and high cholesterol, some types of cancers, and even type 2 diabetes. There may be complications during surgery due to overweight and obesity, sleep apnea, gout, gallbladder disease, and even complications during pregnancy can be felt when people are overweight. How do we make healthy food choices and incorporate physical activity? Because this palette of colors is what makes us healthy. We need to be concerned about serving sizes of food, about preparing healthy meals at home sometimes, as well as eating out and on the run. We need to know what healthy snacks are, and we have to practice healthy family mealtime behaviors. We also need to keep physically active. We have lunch and learn sessions on all of these topics, so you may want to take a look at some of them and increase your knowledge about this type of importance. Serving size we have heard about for a long time, and it has increased the size of people as well as the size of the serving. Because today's servings are nothing like what servings were considered years ago. You need to take a look at choosemyplate.gov to see what number of servings you are eating and how it matches with the government recommendations. And it always helps to visualize serving sizes and to familiar objects. For example, a three ounce serving of meat would be about the size of a deck of cards. You can learn a lot more about this in one of our other Lunch and Learn sessions. This is what the recommended servings look like for adults and for children. Obviously, they're different for adults and children. Not different by too much, but we need to know what those serving sizes look like. It's time you investigate what they are and how to make those changes. What about the grain group? We know that a serving is one slice of bread or a cup of ready-to-eat cereal or a half cup of cooked cereal, rice, or pasta. You can learn lots more about that in another one of our sessions as well. How do we prepare healthy meals for our family? This is an age-old problem. The best advice we can give you is to think about planning your meals in advance. And make sure that your portion size is relevant to what we see on choosemyplate.gov. And if people want second helpings, then we could keep them small as well. We should make sure that we include 
fruit, vegetable, and whole grains in our meal planning. And we may prepare lower fat meals as well and eliminating meat on some days of the week. Think about having more beans in your diet. That's a wonderful source of protein without the added fat. And always make sure you limit the amount of added sugars and salts in your family's diets. How do we cook foods in a manner that is a little bit lower fat? Well, you're famil familiar with these types of methods. When you're baking, grilling, broiling, steaming, um, microwaving, braising, stewing, stir-frying, and some other ways, you are actually limiting the amount of fat that's being used. You can also look at using reduced fat dairy products in your cooking. When it comes to meat, when you're shopping for that, look for 85 to 95% lean ground meat to use for your family meals. Choose loins or round parts of the meat or eye cuts of the meat. These are less fat than other cuts of the meat. Think about using light, low-fat, or fat-free salad dressings, mayonnaise, margarine, and other sauces that you're adding to your meals. And make sure you choose low-fat snacks and desserts for your family as well. How about some lower sugar choices? What are they? Water should be the liquid, the fluid that you're drinking more than anything else throughout the day. You also need to have milk. And it should be low-fat milk and other calorie-free beverages. Limit the amount of fruit juice you're drinking because this adds lots of sugar to your diet. Choose low sugar snacks and desserts, but the key is to read food labels. We all need to take some time, understand food labels a little bit better so we know what we are consuming. If a food uh, label says that sugar is one of the top four ingredients, then the food is high in sugar. You need to be diligent about reading those labels. What about choosing some healthy snacks? Here are some options. Think about fresh fruit. Frozen fruit works well too. How about a low-fat cheese and some low-fat crackers? Raw vegetables and low-fat dip are always a great snack, and lots of people enjoy that. High-fiber cereal may be your healthy snack of choice. And if you're going to have a cake, angel food is the best choice. Be careful what you put on top of it. Serve it with some fresh fruit for the best choice. Look for low-fat or baked chips with salsas. And today smoothies are so popular. Make sure you prepare them with low-fat yogurt and low-fat milk and some fruit. What a great snack for your family. And if you're going to have pretzels or popcorn, make sure the popcorn is air pop so it's not loaded down with salt and butter. What about some family mealtime behaviors? What are we talking about? It's a good idea to aim for having at least one meal together each day as a family because this helps the family to communicate. Families that eat together are actually healthier because they communicate, so there's lots of conversation, but they tend to eat healthier foods as well. Establish a regular meal schedule with your family and have them think about what their healthy attitudes are about food. Encourage tasting new foods and trying something different. Make sure you turn off that TV, computer, and smartphone because they should not be interfering with your family time when you're eating a meal. And guess what, parents? You need to be a good role model for your children. If you refuse to eat foods that are healthy, the children aren't going to eat those foods either. So be a trooper. Eat some healthy foods and make your children feel good about it as well. Try serving new foods one at a time to introduce them to the family. Try some combinations that you think your family might enjoy based on foods that they have enjoyed in the past. Everyone needs to keep active. You need to be healthy with more physical activity in your day. Doesn't matter how old you are. 
I'm talking about from children to old age, we need to keep ourselves physically active because it improves your heart health and it helps to increase your bone density. These are so important for us as we are going through the aging process. Did you know that physical activity helps you decrease stress and sleep better? There's important reasons to stay active. It also helps you maintain your flexibility and balance. It helps maintain a healthy weight and it helps protect against diabetes. How do you do this? How do you improve your fitness? Well, adults need 30 to 90 minutes of physical activity a day, and children need 60 minutes of physical activity a day. So what does that break down to? A moderate activity causes light sweating and a slight increase in breathing and heart rate. Heart rate. Vigorous activity causes heavier sweating and a hard or heavier increase in your breathing and heart rate but you must always check with your doctor before starting various activities, especially if you help have existing health issues. You might want to try wearing a pedometer and aiming for 10,000 steps per day. Take a walk with your family. What a great way to increase the steps in your day. Sometimes it's a good idea to start a walking group in your community, maybe in your workplace, or take walks with your family. Take some quick walking breaks throughout the day. And you've heard this before, park your car a little further away from the store that you're going to or whatever, so that you have to take a few more steps in your day. That's a pretty easy fix. Walk or bike for trips less than one mile. So don't feel like you have to kill yourself and walk 5, 10 miles or bike that far, smaller walks and bike rides work just as well. Avoid a drive through Get out of that car. Walk into. Purchase your food or whatever you need. Taking the stairs can actually help you to be more physically active. So think about doing that, whether it's on the job or in your neighborhood. And if the weather isn't so good, take a walk inside the mall. In fact, many malls have walking groups that meet early in the morning to encourage physical activity. Turn off that TV and go out and play with the kids. Take the dog for a walk or take the dog and your kids for a walk together. And you may want to do a little bit of walking while your kids are playing sports. And one of my favorite things is to walk when I'm on the phone particularly if it's in the house and I can have a good connection, but there's no harm in taking a short, simple walk or just keep walking while you're on the phone. How do we get our families to be more active? We need to limit screen time, time that is spent on computers, TVs, and playing video games because they are sedentary activities. We need to get the family out together more often for walks and bicycle rides, visiting playgrounds, going on picnics, or playing basketball or kickball together. How about walking your kids to school or walk to their bus stop? Encourage your kids to play outside every day and encourage sports like extracurricular activities whenever possible. But focus on exercise being fun and not something that has to be done, and definitely not on the skill or their ability to provide, to perform an activity. Everyone can perform activities at whatever their level and enjoy it and have fun too. And maybe you want to plan active vacations, opportunities where you can take hikes or do some swimming. It is a family affair, and you need to work together so let's summarize quickly. You want to eat healthier meals and snacks. Read those labels. Make sure you understand what your family is eating and make some healthier choices. You do need to control serving sizes for your family and teach them what is appropriate. You want to decrease the unhealthy fats, added sugar, and sodium in your diet. And the best way to do that is to get to reading those labels and select healthier cooking methods too. Increase 
family mealtime behaviors. Make them healthy times. Make them times where the family is communicating, talking about their day, working together to plan and create the meal. And above all, increase the physical activity for your family. All of these things can help to make your families healthier. Thank you for participating in our Lunch and Learn session today. We hope to see you again. Have a nice day.